I feel like every time you come, I have more reasons to be joyful. We've got a record fundraising numbers as it pertains to what's happening at the national level, record amounts of, of donor or not donors, volunteers. I'm getting emails. People are emailing me at the Center for Law and Social Justice. How do I sign up? Who can I phone? Can I do phone banking? How are we doing voter registration? There is an energy that is palpable in our electoral uh, space right now. And I, I, I wanted to say one thanks to you uh, because you also are part of the, the ecosystem that helps to make sure we are informed. Uh, so talk to us. What's the latest and greatest? What do we need to know about what's happening electorally right now? Not just at the president level, uh, but but all throughout. I know since the last we talk, I mean, things are on and popping. Yes. Um, and so there is uh, this energy that shifted, literally, I think I said the last time I was on, in three tweets. Um, so, you know, July... What was it July 21st shifted what this election means actually to democracy moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, there's a quote, if I was sitting in my office in my house um, from Sh Shirley Chisholm that says, I have faith in America and I keep it up. Huh. Most of the time I be like, I look at her like, girl, Miss Shirley, faith in America. <laughs> That's I what you would have faith in. <laughs> we have been living in some of the most politically toxic and racially divisive times in the last decade. But if we just add in, you know, we are still recovering from COVID-19, which by the way, y'all, you know, is out there alive and well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, Children still trying to figure things out. Us having to watch, you know, real time, another school shooting, um, you know, our neighbors being so, decide, you know, divisive around work, uh, around a variety of things. And so, you know, at the end of the day, this Kamala Harris energy just has created some joy. Uh, let's be clear, it wasn't just a, a tweet that changed this. It is something about her stepping into the destiny in this moment and people feeling the ability to understand it's going to be hard work. Um, but we're going to center it in joy. Um, and so the record amount of energy is like you said, I have to go to folk like, stop calling me. I know everybody wants to do something. Give everybody like two minutes. Right. <laughs> um, and so I think there's some grace in this moment, which is we want to bottle that energy. And this energy just can't be about this nest. It's 60 days until right. the end of voting. Right. Um, we've got to talk about the long haul. Win or lose, this is going to be taking this energy, record number of fundraising, record number of people wanting to volunteer into a 365 day mm -hmm. engagement. I was at mm -hmm. the Democratic, I was um, at the tail end of the Republican National Convention. We hosted a Sunday brunch with Black women leaders. And then we hosted events during the Democratic National Convention. And the difference between talking to Black women at the Republican National Convention mm -hmm. uh, and their concern about the the, the, the group, like the, the gloom, of this election cycle and having to have the energy to say, hey, we still need to vote to these like people rocking. I mean, first of all, the conventions will never be the same. The Republicans are sitting going, hmm, how can we change our convention? <laughs> I mean, it was a everyday informative, but like party. Yeah. And normally there's parties around all both of the conventions that other groups do. But like it was a, a party inside the United Center in Chicago. It's crazy. Wow. That, that, and I'm so glad to hear you say 365. And I'm glad to hear you say use the phrase win or lose. Win or lose. Because this is a contest. This is a competition. And we are seeing, uh, I know that everyone's concerned about an October surprise. Feels like, you know, depending on which side you want, it's a surprise every other 15 minutes. Uh, but th this has got to be a 365 effort. I was speaking last night with a group of folks in Brooklyn. Uh, shout out to the uh, the Van and uh, the Vita group, which is one of the Democratic political clubs. And I was just talking, doing a lecture on Project 2025 and things we have to think about. And one of the things I, I didn't stress as much there, but I want to, is that regardless of who wins, the Republican uh based group, the Heritage Foundation has said, our Project 2025 plan is, is candidate agnostic. They don't care who's in office. This is the vision they see for America. So this energy cannot end on election day because I need people to take this energy to the city council meeting. I need them to take this energy uh, to the hearings at the state level. I need them to take this energy to the school board and to make sure that we are fusing, taking it with joy, but really thinking differently about what it means to engage for the long haul. And, and again, one of the things I appreciate about Higher Heights is that 
that you are never just concerned about top ticket uh, issues and you're never just concerned about uh, the presidency, but it's also about uh, some of those down ballot races. And, and so the idea that we have an Angela also Brooks uh, who's going who's in a tough race right now against Larry Hogan in, in Maryland. We need people to show up and, and we need people to continue to do so way beyond this election. Do, do you think we're primed for that, Glenda? Do you think we have put enough in place so that we can continue to carry that energy forward? You actually said something that um, makes me reframe this moment, right? So we always talk about the sense of urgency. Yeah. Um, it's a, you know, we're at a cliff election. We're now using this notion around joy, right? Because it's, I, I think that's a good frame. And it feels it is good. the fire, the sustained fire in our belly for yes. this, this, this moment. Yeah. Um, and it's something about that bubble. Before it was like uncertainty. It is, I think people are clear that they're fired, the fight going back to the old, but fired up. And what, what is that energy doing? You are correct. Um, it is almost a statistical tie in many of these contests. I mean, at the end of the day, Maryland is the latest poll is regardless of what happened at the top of the ticket, this is a head on head statistical tie. And if people don't understand that every single vote is going to matter in this election cycle for the top of the ticket, all the way down to the bottom of the ticket. Mm -hmm. um, and the notion that, oh, Angela Osbrooks is going to be all right is, is not the frame that we need to use in the next 60 days. Um, granted, people know that the electoral college and how we elect and count votes for the president has been very become front and center and very people are concerned. And so the notion is, oh, well, this is down to now they're saying like seven, seven key states. I don't care what state you live in. It's got to be down to every single state um, because it's not just about the popular vote and electoral vote. And if your vote actually matters, um, it is the you don't want to miss out that your school board member loses because you've decided to go, well, I live in Connecticut. You know, the vice president is going to be all right in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. um, there are critical races, including, just so you're aware, we need to deliver governing partners um, and candidates that inspire you at all levels. And so if we talk about Congress, this is going to be, I, I, I suspect um, that the Republicans and what you're talking about, the Heritage Committee are going to be like, you know what, we might lose um, the White House. Mm -hmm. But we're going to make sure that she can't do anything. Right. Uh, and we're going to make sure and she can't do anything that because at Obama. the end of the day, the executive needs the Congress to move significant um, pieces of legislation and policy. Um, right. And so I think they're deep diving into how can we uh, um, disrupt and create a, a larger margin in in uh, the House. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they're looking at seats that people are like, oh, we're not paying. You know, people aren't necessarily paying attention. There's a contested um, race in Connecticut, Johanna Hayes, who is a um, um, one of our endorsed candidates with Higher Heights for America PAC. Uh, she's in, I believe, her third term. If, um, she was elected, because I'm horrible with math, originally in 2018. <laughs> um, she's a former teacher of the year. Uh, she has an interestingly configured district in Connecticut. And she, the Republicans believe it's a seat they can pick up. Uh, wow. They're running a well-liked um, Black Republican state legislator against her for the second time, and they're investing in that race. I read an article the other day. They are have already committed two million dollars to uh, uh, an ad. They've already booked two million dollars worth of ad buys, which in Connecticut is a significant That's amount right. of money. Right. Um, and no one's paying attention to that race. What's the name of the say the name of sister one more time? Um, Johanna Hayes. Uh, she jo represents Jonah. We need Johanna Hayes on the show. Can, can somebody please reach out to her team yeah. so we can bring her? I want to hear her um, story. And there's something about lived experiences. Yeah. As we are talking about school shootings, um, getting our COVID babies who have yes. been school, you are, yep, because you got them, yep. um, ready to be competitive in the global market, you know, in, you know, the ones that are graduating now to the babies is about what having an educator sitting at a, a decision-making table in Washington. And so we certainly um, need to pay attention to the race. Like New Yorkers are like, we're, you know, everyone wants to volunteer. I need New Yorkers to volunteer in New York. <laughs> oh, 
Because <laughs> as far as quiet as it's kept, I believe New York is a swing state and people are slipping yeah, on New York right don't now. Don't let the media Girl. frame the states. That's right. Um, that are in play. Every That's state right. in play, but be clear, the, the, the Democrats lost the House in part because they lost seats in California mm -hmm. and New York. That's and right. so we actually have enough time, talent, and treasures to support um, Everybody. um states across the country, but let's also ensure that there are um elections that we can be engaged in. CNN will make you feel like you've got to get in, in a car and go down to Pittsburgh and Philadelphia right now, which by the way, we do. Yeah. Um, but we can go right over to the border. You know, the New Yorkers, I'm talking to New Yorkers right now. We can go over the border and support um, Johanna Hayes in Connecticut if she inspires you. And certainly there are um, races up and down the ballot in New York. So regardless of where you're listening from, start at home and, and, and book some volunteer opportunities and invest some of your dollars because all elections are local elections. But yes, yeah. we need to help elect um, candidates that are inspiring. For me right now, it's all about Kamala Harris. Um, yeah. Yes, I'm repping her because uh, she's a Black woman. Um, but I'm repping her because she is actually a history maker that is prepared in this moment with her qualifications, lived experiences, um, and um, the time that she's spent governing on the local level all the way up um, to the vice president office. She's uniquely positioned to step in this um, role um, and make history at the same time. And implement some policies that are very much in line with what uh, our community has said that they want. And so that that is significant to me. And I'm so glad you said you need people to come out in New York, uh, because a lot of times those of us who live in states that have been considered blue states for some time, we forget that um, New York had New York City. We had like less than 28 percent voter turnout in the last election. That's dismal. I mean, so yes, we want to get out and we want to, and I have a lot of people like, I'm going down to Philly. I'm going to Bucks County. I'm like, that's good. Um, could you stop off at, at um, you know, uh, Brownsville? <laughs> could, you, could you take a stop in Bed-Stuy? Because we got to make sure that this is a universal 100% approach. And again, it's not for me. It is about this election, but it's also about, I, because, you know, we at CLSJ, the Center for Law and Social Justice, we are building civic power. And so I love this energy and then tapping into it, but I want to see us pl make plans for November 6th, for November November 7th for 2025 for 2026 and beyond and I want us to take the joy that we're feeling right now and not after prayerfully she wins throw up our hands and say whoo all right and I can go back to business as usual business as usual will never be the same business has to be the business of empowering our community to be in control of our community and that requires us to maintain some level of civic engagement unless I'm just being you know extra no we can't be the people who are excited in this moment and then go, she hasn't done anything. And and that doesn't um, mm. uh, just um, point to a Kamala Harris. It's what you know our friends have say about all our elected officials. We have to do two things. We have to hold our elected officials accountable on the issues they said they were going to move, mm -hmm. uh, understand the nuances on how it moves and, and what it will take. And what it will take is actually building political um public will and political demand, you know, public demand and political will, right? Mm -hmm. The other piece is we also have to create the environment for our champions to push innovation into policy. And so it's not just about calling your elected officials when you're mad at them or they're not doing something. It is actually giving them the space um, and the, the support they need um, to support our champions. Mm, I love that. This I'm excited. Next week I'll, I'm going to be at CBC, bringing a staff member with me. We got some got some work we got to do down there. I'm looking forward to making the connections. And, and I know people are going to be again carrying this energy into that space. Uh, and, and CBC for y'all, Congressional Black Caucus has their their annual legislative conference. Uh, and I'm, I'm hoping that the energy will be such that people aren't just sort of doing business as usual, workshops as usual, but really thinking strategically about how to do more than just appear at the conference and go home. I want us to be very strategic uh, with how we're putting together the pieces and I keep getting on these calls Glenda uh, with representatives from the the team and and one of the things they keep saying is you have to make demands like and I they, and I'm like well how do you tell black people to make effective demands because we used to not get nothing and they were like yes black people typically ask for things that are easy and that don't require anything and so you don't get nothing we got to do better and I'm looking forward to organizations like yours helping us to be mindful of that uh, and, and making sure that we are aware about what's actually happening in the zeitgeist and in the political space. What's the, the best way for people to follow you? I know you got workshops and programs coming up. What's yeah. the best way for folks? So we've got 60 days 
uh, to change the direction of this country. And we'll take all of us. Um, Higher Heights is your political home um, for and by Black women, um, but built to be inclusive of our allies. And so we welcome you to engage um, in a 365 day um, um, plan with us, but we're rocking 60 days. And so join Higher Heights at higherheightsforamerica.org. Uh, we are about to launch out all of our series. So if you want to volunteer at home on your couch, we will have opportunities. If you want to go on a girl's trip, we have opportunities for you to be on a girl's trip. Uh, and we have an opportunity for you to be uh, able to have information from your safe, trusted space um, to be able to combat about all the mis and disinformation that they're going to swirl around um, um, our communities because they want to ensure that they're creating some chaos. We are the place that we're going to hold people accountable, that we're going to have a free and fair election cycle um, uh, this year, and that Black women are going to um, be at the center of being the defenders of our democracy.